Don't lose hope. Don't faint. Thank you, Lord. I forgot all about that. Let me read this to you. This came to me earlier. And I totally forgot to look it up and it's coming right back right now. Joshua chapter 1. And you take these words personally, every single one of you. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, into the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, and here is your word, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Now, mm, mm, mm. this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. You getting that word. Okay, let me get back. That thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Oh, praise your holy name, Lord. That's two cents. God is with you. You have no need to panic. So what you blew it? Did you boo-boo on yourself and forgot to put your diaper on too? Hmm. Yeah, ask God to come clean you up. Maybe a little too disgusting for you to clean your own mess. Mm -hmm. Ask God to help you. Ask God to heal you. The potter wants to put you back together again. His hands are not too holy. He is not too far above us. He is not so far gone in his highness that he cannot come down and condescend to get with us in our cesspools, to get with us in our pits and our messes. Come on now. God is for you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? This is our problem. We compare God to man. If it were man, they give up on us, they throw in the towel, they wouldn't waste their time on us, they say yes today and no tomorrow. They're fickle, they're unreliable, undependable. They don't care about us, they get tired of us and our mess, they don't want to be bothered with us and our drum. Grow up. Not God, not God, not the way he works, not the way his love operates. His love is long suffering. He is patient and kind. He's understanding. He is touched, not annoyed. He's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. 
your hang-ups, your trips, your, your mess, your... Oh, he's touched. Not turned off. Your boo-boo stinks while everybody else turns their back on you. Here comes God to the rescue. He gonna clean that little booty. Let me share this. And, and it's a little personal, but let me share this with you. See, God's love is so rich and so beautiful. And this, this is what's hard for us to believe because we've never received that. Okay, now listen to this. When my husband got to the point where he could not do things for himself, okay, what ended up happening is he would call me and he would say, baby, I'm sorry. I, I, I had another accident, okay? So I come downstairs, I get the little diapers going, I get the little bucket, you know, the little basin, you know, get ready to clean them off and everything. And he would say things like this, I can't believe this. I'm 70 something years old. I'm a grown man. Some of you feel that way about yourselves. I'm a grown man sitting up here messing on myself like a big old baby. That's a dog on shame. And I say, are you done? Who's cleaning this mess anyway? Well, you shouldn't have to clean the mess. I said, it's my booty. I married that booty like I married you. <laughs> so shut up. Let me take care of my baby. I, it didn't bother me. It didn't because I loved him that much. It didn't. There was no reason for him to be embarrassed. Not me. I love that man. And then I make fun of how cute his little cheeks looked and all of that. I just tease him. Till he finally come up out of that funk and embarrassment. There's no need. You have no need to be embarrassed with God. When I get through cleaning his little bottle, drying it all, putting stuff on it, make it smell good, and lotion it up and everything else, give him a little massage. And he said, oh, stop. <laughs> I kiss both cheeks tell Milton how much I loved him. Him and my two little babies. Cheek one, cheek two. Now, I can do that. I'm a human being with flaws, full of sin, full of mess, constantly needing God to clean me up. If I can do that, come on now. You haven't tasted of the love of God and you can't believe he'll do that for you.